Welcome all. Uh, thank you for being here with me today. My name is Morten Ström. I um, work with the product strategy team of, of Ublock, Ublock's positioning products. And then there we're with a team of uh, product managers. We define the strategy and we define the products we at Ublock put out for positioning solutions. And today I have a presentation here on uh, high precision solutions for mass market. Ublox is very much targeting mass market. We are not into the, into the niche market so much, but trying to address mass market needs. And uh, here today I'm going to talk a bit about the challenges and how we have enabled this and what are the trends in the mass market and solutions that we can offer to this market. Uh, it works. Let me say that GNSS uh, today I feel still is interesting. Um, maybe it was a time uh, 10 years ago that uh, you, one could have thought that things were done. But I would say that there's quite an interesting market still. There's an increasing awareness of the new possibilities that we have. And we still have this kind of expansion phase where we are entering new grounds day by day and uh, allowing more advanced solution to be rolled out into more and more applications. Things that we maybe we couldn't see 10 years ago are happening and it's, it's quite exciting to be part of this. And it's all enabled by, uh, by the GNSS systems themselves. We have more uh, we have Galileo, uh, we have, as I will touch on the last slide, we have new services, we have Galileo Haas coming, we have also in GPS, we have L2C, we have the new L5, not quite there yet, but uh, it, we can use it in some applications. Uh, and so the system themselves are evolving still. And we also have, and I would like to think that maybe Ublox is in the for forefront here, we have quite interesting uh, development on the receiver side, where we have new chips, we, uh, we bring this kind of technology, high accuracy into smaller modules, into the hands of mass market applications that you couldn't do five years ago or so. And we, with, with, with this also, we are not alone, but uh, as we put out more advanced receivers, we have this, uh, we have to be accompanied, we have to be followed, also joined by Antenna manufacturers, they also have to meet the same need of the market, bringing more affordable uh, solutions and also correction service. The, th the final element of this high precision plays an essential role here, uh, bringing solutions to the market. So together, all, all things combined, I think we have interesting times and um, unprecedented possibilities uh, to do new things here. Um, okay, uh, if this, this kind of slide, if you allow, it might be the, I don't have many U-Block slides here, but this is maybe the one then. Uh, U-Block has been on the market doing GNSS receivers since 1997. Uh, and we have always concentrated on mass market, volume, volume market. We've been strong in uh, telecom timing industry, in automotive industry, in consumer industry, and of course also industrial industry. And it's targeting this industrial industry where we put out then in 2016, we put out for the first time you saw RTK entering this kind of small, small modules. Uh, the product name was M8P, and it was a single band RTK. Uh, those of you, many of you are probably familiar with, with single band RTK, and you would say that, oh, that's not possible. And uh, yes, very, very fragile and only suitable for the very open environments. But it was an important stepping stone for us to, 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 to stand upon, and for our customers also to stand upon, to learn, and know, learn to know because we addressed a whole new community with RTK then. So it was an important stepping stone, on not only for us, but for our customers to learn about these new possibilities and what they could use for, uh, where they could use them in what kind of environments and so forth. And it was very much on this that we then built the ZF9P, we built a multiband RTK, 
in 2019, which has had a quite dramatic impact on, on the industry. We are then followed by the whole antenna community, waves in the correction service market, and of course competitors also, many trying to join this game, because it's a fun place to be. Uh, and, and understandably, uh, we are joined in by many. That's, 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 that's what you need to expect. Uh, uh, then, of course, also I, could, I, I put a few more here. In 21, when then, I think in so many cases, so many applications, uh, people, we are really dealing with uh, people that try to work on the streets. They try to work in the backyards of, of your private houses, etc. And then you always need to be accompanied by, by sensor technology to fill in the gap. So that is also something that we have worked on with um, almost 20 years with the automotive industry that we now then bring to the industrial users, uh, dead reckoning technology. And also then to scale it up, to have a service, to have a solution that is scalable, that really can meet the mass market, uh, this kind of continental-wide, PPP RTK services, I think I have a slide on it later on also. It's really essential to be able to scale up the solution. It's very hard to scale up a solution that is based on VRS or regional services. So this kind of continental PPP RTK is uh, vital and a, a step I think we also continue to, to build on. Um, so here, maybe a bit then about the PPP RTK service. We at Ublox, we have a point perfect na a service. And it's, it's uh, quite in interesting. It's, it's today, I think it's the sweet spot between uh, price performance for many of these mass market applications. I don't think uh, a mass market application can support a VRS service because it's so regional, it's difficult to ma manage if you want to roll out a global product, and it's also quite uh, costly. On the other hand, we have PPP services. They are quite interesting. We are looking at them, what we can do with a PPP service, but maybe here the receivers that we have today are not really, or the receivers that we have for mass market applications are not really up to the job to bring a decent PPP performance to the market just yet. So today I would say that the, this kind of PPP RTK service is really the sweet spot for these kind of dual band uh, RTK types of receivers that we have on the market today. Uh, so I, I think we have with these kind of um, steps, we have addressed a f uh, quite many of the, we have ticked in quite many of the tick marks that allows customers now to go global, to go into mass market. We have high precision available to anybody that wants it, we and many others now. The whole solution, not only the receiver, is there at an affordable uh, price level. Also the, the, the complexity and expertise. I would say that maybe bringing back that uh, first RTK products and what has happened the last six, seven, eight years is that now we have a much broader understanding in the market. In our customer base, there's an awareness of what RTK means or what PPP RTK means, and they know what it allows for and they know how to set it up and how to operate it. So this has been, we are a long way from the days when this was just uh, a few you guys in the room know it, uh, but I would say that you have much broader community now that also knows it. We have a maker community, we have videos on YouTube uh, building their own boards and applications. And also, of course, size and power consumption. This goes back to the, to the receivers that we do today, allowing for this kind of technology to go into small, small, uh, small vehicles, into handheld devices, uh, and then the services again. Uh, services that allow for scalability. Uh, so, what? Okay, I had this kind of slide, kind of forget it, but it brings an overview. What used to be a niche is now today. Uh, um, maybe we are not quite there yet. As I said, many things still happening. 
uh, but we are definitely moving into this uh, where we have millions of RTK receivers or PPP RTK receivers on the field uh, performing various tasks operating in, in vehicles that we didn't really see five years ago. So what, that, what might this then be? Um, I bring just a few examples for the sake of time. But one interesting application is, of course, the ground robotics. Uh, here on the picture, you see a, a robotic lawnmower. But I would in incorporate all into this uh, all kinds of uh, agriculture robotics, uh, last mile delivery robots, and, and more. And for this application, this kind of affordable HPG is an essential enabler for this application to exist. Uh, and for some of the applications, it's really, yeah, for some of them, it's don't, the, it really allows them to exist and, and also an enables them to do so much more. Uh, they are so much more efficient. You can imagine the, the precision, the precision ag robot. It couldn't do the job before, or it was too expensive. A robotic lawnmower can today be, thanks to this technology, so much more efficient, uh, meaning it can cover a bigger area or operating with a smaller battery. Uh, either way you want it, it becomes cheaper, more efficient. And. Uh, and maybe here are some application notes then. And maybe this, this is what, we, what we've learned when we put out RTK or this kind of high precision to mass market. It's quite rare that they come ask for centimeter accuracy. Uh, these applications would typically come and ask for 10 centimeter, 20 centimeter accuracies and, uh, and be happy with that. And then they can make some compromises then. Maybe they can make compromises in with correction service to use. A point perfect or a PPP service is quite attractive for these kinds of applications then. But ever so often, again, they need to be complemented by, by sensors. Uh, those robotic lawnmowers uh, or the last mile delivery robots, they, they do expect then a very high availability. Uh, maybe the precision robot on the field can operate without sensors, but these robotic lawnmowers absolutely must come attached with uh, sensors to bridge the gap when they operate close to the wall of the building or underneath the apple trees on of your backyard. So, uh, and this we can do, but quite often we see our customers then take our HPG solution and they do their own sensor integration. This we see also in the automotive world. Uh, it's a 50-50 split where people come and ask for ju just the HPG and do their own sensor or they ask for the whole solution from us. We can operate both ways. Um, maybe here also a word about correction services. Um, you can work with a local base station, but in applications like this, having a service is so much more easy because even if I said the uh, RTK know-how grows, uh, you cannot assume that the, the farmer or the, the, the guy that ho has a bought a robotic lawnmower knows how to best position a, a local base station. So a uh, correction service much more much preferred for that. I think I will have to jump, jump to the next slide. Uh, you see that we have um, things like this, uh, quite spectacular things that we didn't see before enabled by this application. But for the sake of time, let me jump a bit forward. Um, we are living exciting times, but I don't think they're stopping here. I think also when we look forward, maybe the bus or a very interesting things to keep, keep our eyes on is Galileo Haas. Uh, some might look at it as a threat because it's a free service. Uh, if you're operating a service, you need to then come to grips with this. But I would see it as a huge opportunity for us, for the applications, and also for the correction service providers, because this will broaden up the, the amount of users to yet another level. Of course, we will have to follow it up with receiver technology, 
but it's something that we already work on and have quite interesting results there already. So by the time Haas is there, maybe we have a product to support it. I jumped the rest. There are also similar things here. 3GPP, LPP is also quite interesting to see, see where it goes. Um, but I need to wrap it up. Um, I think we have come a long way. I think there's, we have done a lot of interesting things, but still there's so much more to do for us and so many things to go forward with, where it's really this uh, wave of high precision coming into more and more applications. And um, I only scratched the possibilities with this time. Um, I only welcome you to approach us afterwards in our booth with questions or discussions on the solutions we have today or what the possibilities will be tomorrow, depending on the timeline of what you're interested in.